So here's the question. Is it cheap or is it affordable to live in Merida, Mexico? Let's talk about that. Hey guys, Kelly here and welcome to A Slice of My World. Thank you for coming and spending some time with me. So I wanted to tackle this topic for quite some time, but I really didn't know. I felt like it would be a touchy subject for some, but I really am seeing more and more um, of this being addressed by people moving abroad and not just in Mexico, because I still keep an eye out on what's happening in Thailand as well. And although I guess, you know, yeah, it's happening here too. So here's what I kind of want to say about cheap versus affordable. For me, cheap means it has no real value. If it breaks down or tears up or doesn't work, you will throw it out and not really feel like you spent any good money on it, not feel like you wasted any money because you knew when you got it that it, that it was cheap, that it didn't really hold a lot of value and you didn't expect it to hold up that well, okay? Affordable is something that does have value. It is something that, wow, you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that I just saved this much money. Wow, this is affordable, okay? So the reason I wanted to put that out there and the reason I kind of feel like this is a touchy subject is because here, um, and, I've, and again, in the other places that I've lived, I noticed that as people come in from countries where things are more expensive, they start saying, oh, things are cheap, things are cheap, things are cheap. And then they start treating it that way. And that's why I'm like, I mean, it's the top a touchy subject. And when I say they treat it that way, so for example, I have a staff. Yeah, I get it like that. No, I'm teasing. I have them because I need them. But, um, it, so the, the primary thing that it seems like everyone gets when they, uh, when they come here is someone to clean their home. So they have a housekeeper. I have a housekeeper. I have a pretty sizable house. She cleans the entire house. She cleans the outside patio, which I'll share with you guys. Um, and, you know, and she comes once a week and she is here from a lot of times. I think that she arrives at like nine and she's usually not done until like 1, 1.30, somewhere in there cleaning my house. And I don't have a lot of furniture. So once I start adding more and more furniture, then it's gonna take her longer to clean and dust and you know and all this stuff. But what she charges me is basically $18 each time she comes. And in the States, I can tell you that I did not have my house cleaned every, uh, every, every week. I had my house clean like every quarter. It was like, oh, big spring cleaning or winter cleaning or whatever. And then I had them come in, do a thorough clean. And then I maintained that after they left. And that was anywhere from 45 to $70 an hour, not $18, okay? So when we come here and we see that, oh, it's $18 and we're accustomed to paying a minimum of $45, $50 an hour, we think, oh my gosh, that's cheap. It's not cheap. It provides a value. It is affordable. But here is where we fall down. Because we think it's cheap, we start adding to it. And this is happening with services as well as real estate. So we come here and we move from someplace like New York where one bedroom is $2,400 and you find something here for 400 and you're just like, oh my gosh, this is cheap. And then people start hearing that. So now it's no longer 400. Now it's 500. It's no longer 500. Now it's 600. It's no longer 600. Now it's 800. You see what I'm saying? So then things start to increase because we're like, well, that's just not enough. You know, and so we take our $18 housekeeper and every time she comes, we're like, oh my gosh, look at all the space she's got to clean. This is just not enough because we're basing what we're accustomed to paying on what she's charging. Okay, first of all, remember the exchange rate here is different. The dollar has more power here and we're paying pesos, but we're earning USD. So it still makes it very affordable. If the peso was equal to the dollar, 
it would not be the whole the whole game would be changed so we take our 18 dollar housekeeper and we say well we feel like she should get 25 dollars and we just start paying her 25 dollars well the next time she quotes someone she's like oh well they're willing to pay 25 dollars that's what i'm gonna quote and then that person comes and they're like well, we usually pay 70 dollars an hour this isn't fair we should probably pay her 40 dollars see again where i'm going but also not only does this make it where it would no longer be affordable for, for us to move to these countries, which is part of the reason why we are leaving. We're leaving for a multitude of reasons, but one of the main things that we're looking for is a quality of life that we feel like is similar that we can actually afford, that we can actually enjoy living where we don't have to work three jobs in order to you know, have a nice house, in order to have a staff, in order to have these things. But if, if you treat it like it's cheap and you start throwing extra money at it, then the prices are going to go up. And this also hurts the local people because when those prices of goods and services start going up, the people at the bottom, which we recognize is coming from the states, the poorest people will not be able to afford to live and it will create a larger amount of poor people. And we may not realize or think that our one housekeeper is making that type of impact, but there's more than one of us here. So there's a lot of us coming that are like, oh my God, it's cheap, it's cheap, it's cheap. Throw some money at it, throw some money at it, throw some money at it, give them extra tips, give them extra whatever. So the other thing that I want to point out when you start throwing extra money, whatever they quoted you, that is the market rate, that is a working uh, wage for them here. Because when you were paying someone to clean your home in the States, when they charged you whatever they charged you by the hour, I promise you that they did not leave there at a deficit. They did not leave there. It didn't cost them money to clean your house. You know, they didn't leave going, oh my God, I owe for the broom and I owe for the cleaning stuff. You covered all of that and put money in their pocket. It's no different here. So just because you're not accustomed to paying a lower amount, doesn't mean that what they're telling you isn't a working wage to allow them to do the things that they need to do. So pay them what they tell you. And if you feel like you want to show extra appreciation, holidays happen, give people bonuses. That's what I do. I give a holiday bonus. Um, and then they know at that point, it's like, oh, well, I'm showing you that I really appreciated all that you've done for, for this year or you know the time that you've been working for me and the only other time I give a tip is if they do something completely over and above um, you know what it is that they would normally be hired to do so that's when I give additional money and that's when I would give additional money in the US I don't I don't act any differently if you will with my dollars and my pesos you know so I don't just give look these pesos and dollars be hard to come by I don't just be handing them out I'm like, I work for them, you're going to work for them. And they, they're putting in an honest day's work. And then that's the last part that I want to address is when you just start throwing money at people because, not because they did a great job, not because they went above and beyond, but because you feel like they're not getting enough based on the standards of the country that you came from. Do you not realize that's insulting? And the reason I say that is because I am a very prideful person. Okay, so what you're basically saying is, oh, poor thing, she ain't making enough money. Let me just give her a little bit of extra. Now, most of you that follow me, and if you're new to me, part of the reason I ain't got no hair is because I have lupus. And I, my body does some crazy things. It be rebelling and doing whatever the hell it wants to. But if you want to help me out, I got links below. You can click on. You can buy some things from joyfullycolorful.com. You can um, you can do a lot of things. Let's say you can you can support my Patreon channel that I just started. You can do a lot of those things if you want to. However, what I don't want are pity dollars. Oh, poor little sickly thing. I feel so sorry for her. Keep them dollars, boo. Keep them dollars. I do not want your pity dollars. And to me. When you start just throwing money at people because you feel like they're not making enough, those are pity dollars. 
that you're insulting that hard day's work, that honest day's work that they're putting in because you don't, you're not valuing the, the good or the service that they're giving you. You're pitying that they're not making what you think they should make when they already told you what they want to make. So I hope that this is helping somebody and, you know, and that it, it's giving you a different perspective on cheap versus affordable. And again, in case you didn't catch my shameless plug, um, if you want to support my channel outside of hitting the subscribe button and hitting the like and share, you can check out my links that's down there below <laughs> and hit me up that way. So I appreciate you guys uh, for watching and spending some time with me today. And I hope that you all have an amazing morning, afternoon, week, weekend, whatever it is when you finally watch this video. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll see you next go round. Ciao.